Yeah, that's really working well. This is the second episode of my attempt to replicate this Stirling engine in a steampunk style. So I'm slowly disassembling it and replacing parts. I've already made a walnut base in the first episode and I've made this first pulley out of brass. Ideally it's all going to be brass and walnut and a few other anomalous pieces of metal that might be steampunk influenced, but mostly brass. So I've already replaced this as I mentioned. Next step is to replace the flywheel here. So I'm going to dig right into that and I've got some interesting jigs and problems to solve in order to accomplish this. So stick with me. So this is the chunk of brass that I'm going to use to make the large flywheel for the engine and I'm just going to face off this end and uh, start getting into it here. Alright, yep, about halfway. Got about another thou or two to take off. So here's the original flywheel that I'm going to be making. Of course I have to put a pin on there eventually, but right now I'm going to do a 5 32nd inch hole for the shaft. Uh, oddly enough it's all in uh, imperial measurements. So starting with the center drill. And on to the 5 32nd drill bit. I'm going to go all the way through, of course. This is a little thicker than the original flywheel, and I don't think that'll be a problem. Can't hurt to have more mass than a flywheel, in my thinking. And there we go. A little tidy up with the uh, chamfering tool. Oh, that was a little too fast, wasn't it? Let me try that again. Yeah, that looks good. So now I'm going to start marking out some of the re reliefs inside this uh, flywheel. So put some marking compound on here. Well, blue magic marker, whatever you want to call it. So now I'm going to take my caliper here and measure to the inside dimension of that section there and very gently Mark that. And same thing going further in. It really doesn't matter what these dimensions are. It's purely decorative, but I might as well copy what's already there because it's just a good reference. So now I need to relieve that whole section there in the middle, purely for decoration. So I'm starting just a little bit inside the line first and then I'm going to plow in and move across. I forgot, I need to measure my depth of cut there so I can mark that off on my DRO or make a note of it. So the original shows as 0.5 inches, 0.05 inches, never mind. Okay, so let me get that set up on my DRO. Come out and over to get referenced. Zeroing the DRO. All right, so I've already gotten 0.13. I've got a little bit more to go. I'm going to have to switch to a different cutter because the body of the bottom of the cutter is, is chewing into the metal here. So let me see what I've got. Okay, using this high speed steel cutter is working much better. I'm getting a really nice finish and it, the bottom of the cutter is not binding up on the outside of this radius here. Clean 
side up a little bit. And then I'm going to come out and clean up that slight rough edge there. A bit of a tear out there from the original cutter. Just going to hit that very gently. Just taking the marking off, basically. This outer edge is still out of round because my three jaw chuck is about eight thou off uh, center, so that's why you're hearing that chunking there. And I'm going to clean that up and center it up more better later. Okay, so now I'm going to <clears throat> take a little off the outside here to center it all up to the jaws, and hopefully when I flip it over, I can get it re-centered with the four jaw chuck. Um, I'm only going to go in so far. I've got my carriage locked, so I can't hit the jaws. Moving the carriage very gently, touching off, and just going to go back and forth very gently here. So I've got a 45 degree cutter. I'll do that little chamfer just to copy what was in the original flywheel. Again, purely aesthetic, but nice looking there. I think I'm going to have to file off some of those corners. It feels just a tiny bit sharp there. Yes, okay, time for some Scotch Brite. Okay, so I've got this recentered on my four jaw chuck now, so I'm going to resurface the surface here and see if I can clean up right against the jaws there. I'm not quite sure how best to solve this, but at least I can make this decoration in here and uh, we'll see what happens there. Okay, so I've got that all surfaced out, so now I'm just going to blew it up again so I can mark off the other marks on this side to match the other side. So my first mark is right there at 0 0.032. This will make that recess in the middle there that's largely decorative, but then I'm going to drill these holes in there just like the original. to the mill I need to uh, drill a hole for the set screw. So I've got this trick for finding the center. I'm going to move across like this until I see the drill bit deflect there. Then I can zero my DRO and then go around to the back, do the same thing, zero the DRO, and then I can use the half function to find the exact center of the flywheel. That's pretty simple. So there I am moving to the center position. Oh no, I'm bringing it forward so I can now eyeball to the center of the hole. Close enough. So moving back to the uh, center as defined by the half function in my DRO and getting ready to drill the uh, center drill first. Now I'm going to go in with the tap drill and drill all the way through to the uh, center hole there. Lots of chips. Brass is really pretty stuff to work with. I enjoy it. So 
So now I'm going with the clearance drill and determining how far I need to go with my micrometer and setting my DRO depth so I know when to stop. Uh, I need some uh, tap dimension hole at the bottom for the set screw, but I need clearance all the way down there. So now I'm going in with my tap, which is just dropping right in and tapping through. Got that done. And dropping in the set screw way down in there and checking to make sure it comes all the way through to the hole, which it does. You can just see it there. Now I'm going to uh, recenter the whole thing up on the in the vise um, and using my center finder there I can now just drive the mill around until I find center. Now I'm going to move over exactly 1.5 uh, inches uh, from the center which is where the pin is in the original design. So I'm going to center drill that. and then I'm drilling a hole for the pin. Oh wait, that hole, that drill looks a little big. I think I made a mistake. I'm using the wrong drill bit. The I, sh I was using the drill bit for the center and I need a smaller drill bit for the pin, which is much smaller size. So I'm going to uh, move over again, recenter drill, using my DRO to find 0.5 inches off center. The other hole is just going to be decorative, I guess. So this is a much smaller drill bit for the pin, um, and I'm just using the same size stainless steel pin as uh, came with the original uh, Sterling engine. So I'm going to drill this into a known depth of about a quarter inch, just enough to make sure that the pin will go in there and seat properly, but not going all the way through. So now I've got the parts all laid out here and I'm going to um, just put some thread lock on the pin and drop it in. Very carefully. And that'll just settle right in there. I'll just tap it in with my finger. There. So off camera I've kind of fallen down a rabbit hole trying to figure out how to mount this on my little tiny 3 inch rotary table. Um, originally I was starting off by making uh, T-blocks out of aluminum because I didn't have any the right size and I was thinking about clamping it down like this using fiber washers underneath the standard uh, nut here and I wasn't too happy with that. So then I thought about uh, how am I going to bolt this down through the center and uh, when I turn this over it turns out I can remove the screw on the bottom Take that out of there. And then I made a piece of uh, 5 16th rod, or 5 32nd rather. So I can uh, thread it at both ends, shove this in here like that, set it up on there, and then I made a wooden spacer so I can drill all the way through the brass and not uh, have to chew into my rotary table. So I can center that on there, slide that onto there. Ah, no, it's binding up on the threads. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to regrind those threads. But the idea is, of course, I can bolt this down onto there um, using a nut here. I'm going to regrind these, see if I can get this secured, and then proceed with drilling all of the holes here. Okay, a little encouragement from the wrench and a little grinding off on those threads, which had expanded when I uh, cut the threads with a die. And this is now bolted very securely onto here. So over to the mill. I decided I'm going to mill not. Um, Drill just not just six holes, but actually 12. Uh, they're all decorative, there's really no purpose to them. But since I have the precision of the rotary table, why not? So I've got my rotary table secured to the mill, and I'm going to start with a center drill and go around and center drill them all. Then I'm going to drill through and then countersink them all. So going around to 30 degrees, oh, got to loosen it up, and there's my 30, tighten that down. If 
by the way, the sudden stop that you're noticing on my mill has to do with a recent video where I upgraded the motor on my machine to use a three-phase brushless motor. Uh, it was originally from a, a scooter, apparently, or designed for a scooter. I'll link to that at the end of the video or in the description below. So I'm using a 3 16 inch drill bit to drill all the way through and I've measured that if I go through 0.5 inches looking at my DRO I can stop there and I'll set my depth stop after the first hole. So. Whoa, that really pulled through. Okay, I guess I need a depth stop right there. So I'm going to set that on the mill first. I remember something that Quinn said about uh, drilling into brass. If you use an old dull drill bit, it won't jump in and pull as hard. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to move over to my next increment hole here, which is coming back around to zero. And let's see how that feels. Relatively slow speed. Maybe that will help too. I don't know. Yeah, that feels better. There we go. Okay, that didn't jump much better. So I'm running the drill slow to get to the bottom of the center drill and then speeding it up when I get into the meat of the metal. So starting off slow right now. And then now I'm plowing to the real heavy stuff a little faster. And there it is. Seems to work pretty well. I've got my smallest chamfering bit in there. I'm going to run really slow, which my new motor will do very nicely, and just touch off very gently, and that is plenty right there. So I'm going to set my physical depth stop on the mill head column and proceed around. So 10, 20, 30, sneaking up on zero, and here we go. That sure looks nice. Last couple of chamfers here. I'm using my tachometer to go to 350 RPM so I can have a repeatable RPM for each chamfer. Should give a more predictable result. I have the new brass uh, flywheel installed here, but the thing is because it's further out this way, I don't have a way to screw this down. I had to move everything out this way. So um, in order to run the machine, I'm going to have to hold this down. I'm going to light the burner here. There it is. I don't know whether you can see the flame in the video, but it's there. So let's wait a few seconds for it to warm up. Next thing I'm going to do is make these little brass, um, I guess, what are these? Arms? Piston arms? I don't know what the term is for that, the term of art. But uh, let's see. It's warming up a little bit. Let's see if it's going to go. I'm going to have to hold this down really steadily here. Almost. It just needs to warm up a little bit. I got better heat going on the uh, alcohol burner there and micro-adjusted the phase relationship and it looks like it's running great. It's running really nice and quiet too. If you're enjoying the video, please give me a like and subscribe if you want to see more of this series. Thanks.